Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you all for being here, and uh, special thank to the Israel for the foundation and Emmett. And the uh, Congressman Manborn and Stockman for hosting me today. I am honored to speak before you and your guests today. As you heard, my name is Father Gabriel Mandaf. I was born in the city of Nazareth in the north of Israel. The town where the angel Gabriel, whose name I have, <laughs> appeared to Mary, the mother of God. The very town in which Jesus Christ grew up and then began his ministry. When I was born, Nazareth was a city that was majority Christian, mostly being Orthodox, but also Catholics and Protestants. Now it is majority Muslim. As I speak to you now, across the Middle East, the soil is being soaked with the blood of Christians. Across the Middle East, in the past 10 years, 1 million Christians have been murdered in the Middle East and Africa. This means that every five minutes, a Christian is killed because of this fight. A fight that stands for love and peace in the world. A century ago, Christians were some 20% of the Middle East. Today, that figure is estimated to be around 4%. Those who can speak Islamic persecution have fled. Since 2000, over 77% of Iraq's 700,000 Christians have fled. In Syria, where there were 2 million Christians, there are now less than 250,000. Those who remain exist as second class citizens to their Muslim rulers. They face discrimination, physical threats, and have been subjected to the most heinous of crimes, threats, execution, and false conversions, and war. Because they believe in a different faith, a faith with a universal message of love and peace for all. But in the Middle East today, there is one country where Christians are affectionately granted freedom of expression, freedom of worship and security. It is Israel, the Jewish state. In Israel, Christians enjoy good education, employment, welfare, healthcare, and high socioeconomic status. In Israel, Christians have freedom, which no Muslim power has ever offered us. As a child, I was told that there were bad relations with the Jews. I was told that the Jews say this was their country, and the Arabs say it was theirs. After high school, I went to live with my grandmother in Haifa, a mixed city in Israel. I began to work and meet with the Jews. Every day, I was around the Jews. I worked in a Jewish hotel and was successful. And they sent me to take courses. They invested in me. The idea that I needed to be scared of Jews or that there was something dangerous about them was simply not true. They myth was exposed. <coughs> From my childhood, I had the feeling that I had to serve the church. To be honest, I fought it. I really fought it. <laughs> and I, my family did not want me to enter the church. 
they wanted me to be a lawyer or a doctor. <laughs> but it is quite funny. So I began my studies with the Greek Orthodox Patriarch in Jerusalem and learned that we as a people, our roots are from the Jewish people. I learned that Jesus Christ was Jewish. Part of the people that Moses led out of Egypt with the hand of God. Of God. Part of the tradition to the passage of Yeshua. Joseph and Mary who raised Jesus Christ were Jewish and knew the scriptures. Our prayers are the sons of King David and the word of the Bible, including the five books of Moses and the books of the Hebrew prophets. The Pope Francisco recently spoke with Prime Minister Netanyahu about whether Jesus spoke Hebrew or Aramaic, <laughs> which is the language of the Talmud. Just as our Christians origins are rooted in the Holy Land where Jesus Christ walked <coughs> Christianity considers itself called the Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible and is not separated from it. Those of us lucky enough to live under Israeli sovereignty have very good relation with the Jewish community living in the land. The state of Israel has demonstrated a considerate attitude towards my community. And today, Israel, the Jewish state, the, the only place in the Middle East where Christians are safe. Today, in the face of religious persecution and terrorism, we share a will for peace and harmony to live together in the land of our forefathers. But what about the rest of the world? Does the world speak up against the persecution of Christians in the Middle East? Does the world support Israel for its democratic values and dedication to freedom of religion? Why? No, sadly not. Instead, Israel has become a victim in commissionalism and criticism. So much of the international community chooses to single out and attack Israel. This is double crime. It has the only free society in the Middle East and encourage acts of terror and even against Jews, Yazidis, Christians, and even Muslims in the region. It is time the world woke up to the fact and those who want to dis destroy, destroy the Jewish state are also <coughs> hurting the least free Christian in the Holy Land. That is why I am here today. <clears throat> to call on you to join me and show the world Israel's status as the one true safe place for Christian life in the Middle East. It has fallen upon me by because Christian to flee to you, leaders of people seekers of peace to support my campaign to end the global which panic of the only free country in the Middle East. I call you today to direct the stand of this great, great country to prevent the persecution of Christian and to stand by Israel to protect our community and heritage. Please don't let the thousand of years of thriving Christian's life in the Middle East come to an end 
on your watch. Thank you very much. God bless you all and shalom.